Hello. It's been a hot minute, hasn't it? I'm sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I could list off all the reasons why I haven't uploaded, but um, that's not interesting, is it? So I'll just jump into telling you what I've been up to. So I thought the first thing I'd do is share the art I've created so far with you. And at the same time, I can show you the project I am most excited about. So you know what, I'll start with the art I created for that. It's not entirely chronological, but the project is launching this weekend, so this feels like a good time to tell you all about it. I painted these two pieces back in April and they were specifically designed to be the art for the packaging for my very own box of custom paintbrushes. This was done with the help of those of you who joined me for my very first YouTube live stream. so thank you so much to all of you for assisting me with this project. And I'm super excited to finally be able to share the final product with you. The brand got in touch last year, just before Christmas, and asked if I'd like to create a custom set of painting brushes. And I very enthusiastically said yes, because I think that is just a cool project to be on. And seeing my name on the box is a really lovely feeling, honestly. And I'm really, really happy with the result of this collaboration. I had free reign over the brush set. I got to choose the size of the brushes, the type of brushes, the stiffness of the bristles, the length of the handle, the colors. I got to make, obviously, the art for the box. So I'm super, super chuffed. I did get sent the first draft of the brushes a few months ago, and I've been using pretty much exclusively those brushes to paint my pieces. So all the art I'll be sharing with you in this video, I've actually been painting with those brushes. I've been painting for long enough now that I have clear favourites for the brushes I use in my work and the brushes in this set are a fateful representation of that selection. So if you fancy grabbing yourself one of this limited edition set, make sure to go over to craftamo.com and sign up for their mailing list to be notified once we go live. The sets will become available on Sunday the 19th of June at 3pm BST and I will also be going live here on YouTube at the very same time to do a demo painting and chat with you to celebrate the launch. So I really, really hope to see you there and I can't wait to hear what you think of the brushes if you get yourself a set. Talking about the art I'm going to be using for the demo in the live stream on Sunday, I want to prep a sketch that I can then start painting during the stream. I've got this mini sketch of basically the rough idea I want to create for this live stream. So I think that's what I'm going to do for this video, I reckon. I might try and sketch out the idea, I need to take some reference photos of myself and the pose and then I might sketch out the drawing in my sketchbook, get it ready to paint for Sunday so that I've got painting ready to go and I can jump straight into it on the live stream. And while I do that in this video, I'll share with you the pieces I've painted so far in 2022 because you won't have seen any, unless you follow me on other platforms, you won't have seen any of them because I haven't done any videos on YouTube. I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to get back into the swing of that. So yeah, definitely feel free to use this video as some rambly company while you do whatever you need to be doing in the time you're watching this video. One was a bit of a slow art year for me. Um, I was struggling with like some self-confidence issues and I was comparing myself quite heavily to every artist I saw. Not a new issue and one I'm sure many of you will relate to. For some reason it got particularly bad last year. It's a bit strange because as I've gotten more technically proficient in my work. My anxieties and insecurities have also gotten more potent. There's something both surprising and a little bit confusing about our capacity at being self-critical, being enhanced by becoming better at what we do. I'm at that stage where I can see flaws in my work really well, but I'm not skilled enough to bypass them yet, if that makes sense. 
which is a frustrating stage to be at because I have all these ideas I want to work on but I feel like my vision is hurtling ahead of my skill and my technical proficiency and I can't help but feel like I won't be able to do my ideas justice. Um, does that make sense? And then alongside that I'm also contending with the fact that I'm still not sure what my visual style is. I know what my thematic is, I'm a surreal artist, uh, that's settled, I'm comfortable and happy and fulfilled in that. I like what concepts I like to paint, I like, I know what ideas excite me for my art. I'm really lucky that I never really have any trouble coming up with new ideas, but I am stuck when it comes to deciding what I want those ideas to look like. I want to do a proper video about searching for style at some point, something with like tips and whatever I've learned so far, um, anything that can be useful to you guys. But but for now, suffice to say that basically all the pieces I've created so far in 2022 have been to experiment with some elements of style that I was um, wondering about and questioning whether I wanted to integrate them into my personal visual aesthetic or not. I don't know if you're the same as me, but at least in my case, I'll see an artist I really love, be really excited by their work for, sh for a period of time and during that time period I'll want my work to look similar to theirs. Not as in plagiarised, obviously, but a similar vibe, a similar level of stylization, or, you know, or say a similar level of realism, or a similar type of lighting, that kind of thing. Similar colour choices, do you know what I mean? Stylistic elements that um, I really like in their work and that I think um, I'd like to integrate in my own. But then in actual practice, that won't actually always work out. So there's something that I, I might really, really love muted colours in another artist's work and that might make me want to integrate more muted colours in my own work. And then once I actually put it in practice, I realise that that doesn't actually fulfil me. It's not actually a, a practice that I, I'm, I get excited about and it's not a look that I look forward to achieving. Um, which is only something that you can really learn by doing so it's a matter of really experimenting with all the things that you think you might like for yourself and then realizing that actually they might not actually fit as well as you thought they might so let's jump to the pieces i've done um up to now in 2022 so far i have made one two if you count the piece i did for the brush box bigger paintings and a number of smaller pieces and by bigger and smaller, I mean that bigger pieces are ones for which I have preparatory sketches, for which I uh, do a lot of reference searching, for which I, I ponder them for a long time. Usually they'll take me from the idea sketch to the finished painting, they'll take me anywhere between a few weeks to a few months. That's not solid work, but it is it being in a corner of my mind and me thinking about it. I'll do several composition sketches a lot of the time, I'll have a number of references, I'll take a lot of pictures of myself. It, there's a lot of research and preparatory work that goes into them. And then I'll usually pick a piece of premium paper to paint them on. By smaller piece I usually mean something that's smaller than they fall. And I'll usually decide on the concept pretty quickly, have one sketch pretty much, then scan it and then paint that. If that, sometimes I'll sketch straight onto the paper and paint on that. And usually there's not as much energy that goes into those because I want them to be a bit more spontaneous. I want them to be more exploratory. And I'm also not overthinking the concept. So usually I'll have an idea and I'll go straight into sketching out that idea. So the piece I'm sketching today in this video that I'll paint on the stream for example would be considered in my head as a smaller piece it has had like a really quick tiny little preparatory sketch which I showed you and then the sketch that I'm doing right now and once that sketch is done which is getting close to it um, I'll be scanning it and then transferring that to my final paper and plunging straight into that painting so by bigger painting I do mean things that are more involved and take me longer in the preparatory stage of the painting um, than something a bit more spontaneous that is a bit smaller and that I don't revise as much. So while I finish this sketch I'll talk a little bit about that bigger painting I did so far in this year and show you the smaller ones and a little bit of my sketchbook at the same time. 
My first big painting of 2022 was From Within, which is based on a sketch I had sitting in my work in progress pile for well over a year by that point. <laughs> this piece was an experiment with muted colours and subtle value ranges. I was tempted to go bright with the snake, maybe a red or something, but I chose to go with a cream white instead to create more value contrast and avoid settling back into a comforting pattern of colour scheme. This painting is very representative of my mindset at the time and the trouble I was having with my self-confidence and my mind feeling like it was working against me. Sometimes your own thoughts can feel like an animal that needs to be tamed and calmed, you know, domesticated, soothed back to friendliness. Um, it's a weirdly fascinating cycle of like unraveling and then reconstructing yourself and your thought patterns so you can work with yourself again instead of constantly be fighting with yourself and this piece was one of the ways I contended with that challenge. I also did a number of smaller pieces which were helpful in de-dramatizing the painting process and reconnecting with the things I love most about creating which is something I regularly have to do when I'm going through art blocky or sort of troubled periods in my art creating process. My first experiment was trying to work with acrylics in a more traditional way than I currently do, so more thickly and opaquely. I did a small painting in one of my favourite sketchbooks but didn't end up liking the result very much, so I did something I don't usually do but I've been trying to do more lately because of how helpful it has been, and that is trying to recreate the same image, just painting it a bit differently because it allows me to really compare the results because the image and the concept are the same, but it really helps me visualize the differences in my techniques and the, the type of different results I can achieve and really get a feel for what I prefer. So I recreated that small f failed quote unquote image using my usual technique of using acrylics more like watercolors in washes and watered down layers. I ended up really liking that process and it solidified in me that, at least for now, that's the way I want to work. These two little paintings helped me validate my technique choices to some extent and ease some of my doubts, which helped me regain a little bit of confidence and I felt much more energised to keep going than I had been up to that point. So my next few paintings were a mix of small experiments. I tried another muted colour piece based on a sketch idea I have liked for a long time but never fully knew how to make into a painting. The vibe of the two is very different and I don't feel like I have reached a satisfactory point with this concept yet, but the small painting was a step forward. Another element that I really love and I'm drawn to in the work of others is light and the ability to make a piece look, at, look like it's glowing. I experimented with that in this little painting and it solidified for me my attraction to glow and light and high contrast in my pieces. And then, in contrast to that image, I tried using brighter, more saturated colours to achieve a more overall glow rather than a localised one in this piece here. I've mixed feelings about this one and it confirmed to me that I'm not all that excited by using brighter colours. I feel much more comfortable with a more limited range and a lower saturation overall. So I tried combining a lot of these conclusions in this last little piece, which feels like a midway between a bigger painting like From Within and these small experimental ones I've shown you so far. This one I titled The Best I Could Do and it's an ode to the people who have or are suffering and yet find a way to build themselves up piece by piece. I'm always and will always be amazed at the suffering that exists and how people are able to overcome what has happened to them and be there for themselves and others in both big and small ways. And this piece was a way for me to honour that. I've also been trying to reconnect with my sketchbook in the past few months, something that had been falling to the wayside a little bit in the past year or so. So here are a few of the pages I've worked on lately, and if you'd like to see all of the pages in this sketchbook so far, I share all of that on my Patreon, as well as time lapses of all the paintings I've shown you in this video. My sketchbook is my way of working out ideas visually because I do have a tendency to think that intellectualizing my concepts in my head is enough for me to figure out how I want them to look on paper, but that simply isn't true and being able to visualize things has always been more helpful. I know that in theory 
and yet sometimes it does bear repeating to myself. <laughs> Some ideas I will sketch out and it will confirm that I would like to make them paintings someday and others I think I might want to paint but just sketching them out is, is sometimes enough to get it out of my system and make me realise I'm happy with the idea to stay as a sketch for now. Talking about sketches, um, I wonder where I am at with the one I'm creating for the stream, so let's check back on that. I think I'm done with the sketch in my sketchbook. I could paint this in my sketchbook, but the paper in the sketchbook isn't very good. Um, it doesn't respond to paint very well. Something I do also is that I usually don't worry about the size of the drawing when I do it in my sketchbook, I just do it however I feel. And then I'll pick a piece of paper that I want to paint on, measure it, and then I can scan my sketchbook drawing, bring it in Photoshop, resize it and then print it to the size I want and then from there can transfer it to my final painting paper. So that's what I'm going to do for this one. So I need to scan it, take it into Photoshop, resize it, print it out and transfer it and then ink it. And then that once that's done I'll have my sketch ready for the stream. I quite like that size. One of the advantages of putting something into Photoshop is that I can also flip the image to see if it still holds up. I did that with my phone early on in the sketching process and I usually just do it on my phone but um, I also like to do it in Photoshop just because it allows me to tweak the image digitally to see how I could change things so that they're, they're more accurate. But this sketch actually holds up quite nicely flipped which is a nice surprise. That's not it's rarely the case. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm good to go. And I think actually I might not I might I might not print it out to the right size because the sketch in my sketchbook is the right size for the paper I've just dried out. So I might just go ahead and transfer it. I use carbon paper to transfer my drawing. I can also use my light box, but because I'm gonna be painting on paper that is attached to its pad, I don't want to remove the watercolour paper from the pad because that allows me to paint on a flat surface, I don't have to stretch the paper if it's still attached to its pad. So I'm going to leave it on the pad, but it means I can't use my light box. So I am going to use carbon paper to transfer the sketch. I'm babbling now. <laughs> right, let's do this. <laughs> I chose this tiny detail brush to be part of my brush set specifically because it's amazing for outlines, it does really really fine lines and the free round brushes <laughs> the free round brushes in my custom set are the standard craftable round brushes because <laughs> I just really loved them and I thought they were perfect as is so I kept them in my set. And then the two angled ones are based on two of my favourite brushes. I'd never had like round brushes with such a tiny point on them before and I was genuinely amazed by them when I got them from Craft Hammer so I decided to keep them in my brush set and I really really love them. I'm gonna use the smallest one from my set, the 3 O round brush to do all my outline on this little painting. I have a colour mix here that might be dry, completely dry, okay, <laughs> never mind. For most of my outlines I like to use a um, dark red, it's almost a brown red. I really like that type of colour and I think it will suit this piece quite well. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to try and get you in nice and close so you can see the brush perform and then uh, we will be off.
so there we have it the sketch is ready and all I have to do now is set up the stream for tomorrow I remember the first time I set up the stream in April was a bit of a kerfuffle <laughs> so unfortunately I didn't give myself any notes um, so I'm gonna have to figure that out this afternoon but I'm sure it'll be fine regardless I'm really looking forward to hanging out with you guys tomorrow and uh, hopefully talk about the brushes make sure you go check out the brush set on craftamo.com and sign up for the mailing list or set yourself a reminder for the launch tomorrow. It's a limited edition so there's only a few hundred sets of the brushes available. If you have any questions at all about the project I hope you'll join me for the stream tomorrow. It'll be at the same time as the launch. I'll try and go live like at 2.45, 15 minutes before the brushes launch or something just to make sure I'm live for the launch itself at 3 p.m. BST which is these times in other places in the world. <laughs> I'll do my best to paint this little one on the stream. I most definitely will not be able to finish it on stream but I think it will be my second attempt ever at trying to f film myself painting live which should be interesting. <laughs> so I hope you guys will come hang out and I really look forward to seeing you all and I hope you'll like the brush set and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll have another one, another video <laughs> next month. I am trying to get back into YouTube, so I will post more, I promise. Now, when is another story, but I'm gonna try and be more consistent from now on. Thanks for your time. Thanks for hanging out with me for this video. I hope you'll come hang out tomorrow and I hope that you're all really well and whether or not I see you tomorrow, have a lovely, lovely weekend and take really good care of yourselves. Speak soon. Bye everyone.